If I had to give you one good piece of Wild Heart's advice, it would be... Plant melons and you will have melons. Plant beans and you will have beans. Hello, my fellow hunters of Wildest Heartest. You need money. You need gold. You need that sweet Minato currency to pour into your armor and your weapons because quite quickly things get quite expensive. With the weapon system in this game encouraging you to spiral around the tree to grab all the perfect passives, you're ending up spending a thousand, two thousand, two thousand, three thousand, two thousand, one thousand, two thousand, three thousand until you reach your perfect weapon. That adds up quickly, especially coupled with armor sets costing a pretty penny just to make and then even more so to humanify or kimonoify them. So how do we get our hands on as much coinage as possible, as fast as possible? If only someone could tell you the perfect strategy in perhaps a easy-to-understand video-esque format. So interestingly, in Wild Hearts then, you don't really get any worthwhile amounts of money from selling kimono parts, from selling gathered materials, from selling anything you find on a map. So it kind of shuts down a lot of the usual strategies for making, well, infinite money in these types of games. Fear not though, for there is a solution, and it's quite an interesting one. Every kimono in the game then will drop a specific material that is tied to it, whose purpose is simply to be sold. Just to be sold. So if we have a look at Rage Tail then, he will drop himself in chapter 1 and 2, the rare Rage Tail Pip, and in chapter 3 onwards, the prized Rage Tail Pip. And then King Tusk, as another example, will have the rare King Tusk Seed, and then the prized King Tusk Seed. Basically then, these are your money makers, but obviously that means that you're going to have to kill Kimono to have the most efficient money farm in this game, which perhaps feels a little bit, oh, I mean, that's what I'm doing anyway, so just sell the sellables that I get from Kimono. Well, yes, there is, of course, a way to optimize this, a best kimono to kill, a best quest to do, so fear not on that front. Once you get to chapter 3 and start getting mighty kimono, what you want to do is kill a rage tail and kill a sap scourge, and once you have beaten them both enough time solo, you will unlock this quest here, which is to fight them both at once, a double hunt. What is special about this hunt is twofold. Number one, it's against two ridiculously easy kimono, and number two, it guarantees every time you complete it to reward that prized Rage Tail part for an extra sellable on top of the guaranteed two, one from both Rage Tail and Sap Scourge you will get. So obviously, killing a Sap Scourge, killing a Rage Tail is the literally two easiest, squishiest, most uh, farmable kimono in the game. So you see where we go here. We pop on this quest, we absolutely apply maximum murder to both Rage Tail and Sap Scourge, and about five minutes later you will complete it, and now you can go to the selling. Now you might be asking, well, surely we want to perhaps target a more advanced or higher up kimono because I imagine their sellable part is worth more? Well, you'd be surprised. Yes, it is worth more, but to put it in perspective, Golden Tempest is worth 1500 to sell his sell part. A Rage Tail is worth 1050 So, can you kill two Golden Tempests or three Rage Tails faster? Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I think, uh, ooh, that's a, that's a toughie. I, I'm gonna go with the Rage Tails, I think, and therein lies the rub, right? You are much better off chain farming, brain off, easily 30 second to a minute long hunts, the little guys, than you are going for the slightly more expensive big guys. Honestly, this feels like almost an oversight. You would expect, like, Golden Tempest to sell for, like, three, four thousand with how much more appreciably time-consuming and difficult he is to kill compared to the small ones, but 
hey, I am not complaining. So yeah, this hunt right here will take you an average of 5 to 10 minutes to do. You'll get 3 sellable parts. You can also sell the actual drops from the kimono. I know I said kimono parts aren't worth a lot, and they're not, like 30 to 60, but hey, you probably won't need all these Rage Tail and Sap Scourge parts, so you might as well sell them. Same with the core stone, the quest rewards, you will probably end up having hundreds of the stuff by the time you're in endgame, so basically every completion here you will get an average of about 4,000 gold. It takes me 5 minutes to do a full cycle in, and selling in a normal endgame set, so of course that means I can do 12 runs in an hour for a grand total of 48,000 farmed in an hour which is appreciably pretty decent, is it not? That will get you a fully max, min-max, perfect weapon, no matter how many stops on the tree you need, and basically a full armor set too. Now, all of this said, there is another way to make a good chunk of change that is definitely worth telling you about, and that is certain side quests. A lot of them will reward stuff like gold ore, which sells for 1400, but there is one specific chain that I really want to highlight, because it specifically gives you a lot of the good stuff, and that is the true culprit. You'll get this fairly early on, and it's a four-step side quest chain, and each step will reward you increasingly amounts of gold. Step two, for example, gives you 3,000. Step three gives you 6,000. Step four, and the final step gives you 9,000. It really does ramp up, and that is really excellent, and for the most part, everything it needs you to kill is quite chill. The final step is a chapter 5 post-final boss step, so you'll have to wait then to do it, but this is definitely one to focus on, definitely one to think about. Other than that, then, you can do little things like set up Tsukumo shrines in Minato that will farm you ore and food ingredients that you never plan on using and you simply harvest to sell for little bumps in money. It's just free and doesn't take much time, so it's something you can think about if you're really wanting to squeeze every penny out of the game. But there really isn't a sort of cheat code here, and that's quite, well, interesting compared to, for example, the monster hunt a way of doing like an efficient mining path across the map and just selling all the ore you've gathered. It really does want you to hunt kimono for your pay, and admittedly as hunters that kind of makes sense, so thematically it's quite a neat system. So, I wish you luck then in slaughtering the entire local sap scourge and rage tail population, and I hope you get all your ideal weapons and armor toot sweet. We do have a guide on how to farm actual kimono parts really fast and efficiently too for the other half of this equation, so you can check that out as well. For now then, like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good bye. <laughs> Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye